That's it. So right now we have the man of the hour. Can we put some lights? There's, okay, there's no lights for him. But yeah, the, the guy we're here for, the guy that organized this, my brother, Cheers. Can you give it up for him? There's just something about a church, isn't there? You guys are looking hella gorgeous today. CEG day. <laughs> um, see, first off, I'd like to thank you all for giving up your Saturday afternoon to be here. You know, it's really nice when we as youths can gather together like this without there being a, a rave or a barbecue somewhere. You know, um, the other day I went to this um, Nigerian Democratic meeting and the Nigerian Minister of Education was speaking there. He asked, he asked the audience this question and I believe this applies to all African countries. He asked, uh, why do we, with so many graduates, not seem to move forward and I believe there's no there's no specific answer to that I know if I start asking you like, you know we'll get a range of answers especially from the parents you know you guys just heard my dad talking it we'll get a range of answers that'll go on for time and time so but the issue the, the thing the thing he was stressing is that there are issues that prevent our young people from really progressing you know that's why like and issues are normal car you know um Issues are normal, cut. Everyone faces them, but some people, they face them, they bounce back. Some people face them and they never really get back. You know, that's why I see so many of our, of our brothers and sisters in jail, not really doing much of their life, or you know, in, in the worst case scenario, dead. Now, that brings me to Precious Education and Health Foundation. You know, challenges that derail us are, are what we're trying to prevent here. You know, I myself, I was derailed. Now, with me, it, it took a couple of years to manifest, you know, but it started with little things like, what, staying out late, you know, hanging out with the wrong crowd, you know, and then it moved on to things like committing crimes, smoking weed, some kind of things. So, now, coming from where some of us come from, you might, just, you might try and justify it with things like, uh, if, you're, if you're making illegal money, you say things like, I'm doing it for my family and trying to take care of my mum. Or if you're if you're hanging with the wrong if you're if you're in a gang, you say things like, Oh, it's my own protection. Or if you're if you're if you're smoking weed, you say, Oh, it's because I'm so stressed. You know, there's there's always a reason why you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. You know, so me myself, I was involved in crime. Now, you can ask my dad, I'm a very stubborn person, so I was bound to only learn the hard way. So boom, last year, last year, May, I went to jail um, for an offense I committed. And you know, let me tell you, there's, there's nothing worse than having another man tell you that for the next two years, um, your, your, your life is going to be restricted. And like, I was, I was very fortunate to have a great support group in that time. You know, family, a couple good friends, you know, there's people that made sure that, couple good friends, you know, people that, people that just made sure that I, I went through that stage with, the, with, with my head held high. You know, just making sure that I was reading my books, you know, building my character, you know, them kind of things. They also made sure that while, whilst I was in there, I took some time out to think, you know, reflect, and also to envision. Now, when I was in there, you get 18 hours in one small room. You, you have no other choice but to think. And, you know, I'd, I'd think about this, you'd think about that, you'd think about family, friends, you know, whatever it is. But I'd always come back to two questions. How did I get here? And what could I have done to prevent this? And, I, and honestly, I, I, only, I really put it down to two things. Me being there was because of lack of self-awareness and not knowing how to deal with some of the things that I was exposed to. Now, obviously, when I was in there, I met all these different kind of people, you know, with their different stories. Like, my gym partner in there, for example, he used to be a child actor. He was even working with um, Peggy from East Enders at one point. You know, a talented guy, so you gotta ask yourself, how did, how did he get from there to serving eight years for a shooting? And that's just one example, like, Whilst I was in there, you see guys get released one month, and they're back in jail two months later. And, you know, I'd be, I'd be chatting to them. I'm like asking, oh, 
Papa, I swear you was going to do this and that. Like, how come you're back in jail? You know, tell me, oh, you know, this is all I know. You know, I don't know how to pursue this. I, t I don't know how to, you know, start my own business. I don't know how to go about, you know, getting a job in this or that. You know, now, the, the, the saddest stories that I met in there were the guys that were guilty by association. Uh, you, you, know, you, you, know you, read on, you know you read on all these newspapers, yeah? You read about all these murders. You hear about three, four guys getting sent down for killing one person. Uh, you gotta ask yourself. Only one person pulled the trigger, you know? But the rest of them were guilty by association. And it's, it's a very sad story when you're serving 12, 14, 16 years because you, you stuck with your friend. That's basically it. You stuck with your friend. You didn't. You didn't kill no one. You just. You stuck with your friend. Now I'm not saying they're not guilty or nothing, but guilty by association. Now, thinking about, all, I go back to myself sometimes, and I think about all these things, and I'm like, like raw. How, how did we all get here? Uh, you know, like I know we all have great parents that wanted us to get get to where we need to be, and they made sure they did their best to make sure we got there, but somehow. We all we were all still in jail. So <laughs> they were all still in jail. Now that's that's what prompted me myself to to play my part in ensuring that when I get out, less young people get derailed. Now, I just gave you guys experience uh, examples from my experience. You know, your your potentially derailing issue could be much different. You know, say something like not knowing what to do next in your career, or, or depression, other, ment other mental health issues, or just not knowing how to start your own business. You know, you name it, there's, there's a range of issues that derail someone, you know, lack of family support, them kind of things. Now that's the reason why I started the um, Precious Education and Health Foundation. You know, because what we're trying to do here is that, say after this event, cause you know today we're, we're talking, we're, t we're touching on a on a range of different issues. But after this event will be, the, the, the events we'll be holding will be touching on, on specific issues. You know, say things like life after an unplanned pregnancy. Car, you, you hear of all, uh, all of our sisters who, you know, say they, get, say they got pregnant, and after that they just sign on to benefits, and you know, that's, that's life for them. You know, there's, there's something that they can do after. So what we'll be doing, we'll be holding, you know, web chats, workshops, where we're gonna touch on how you can pursue what you need to pursue. We're gonna provide you with the kind, right kind of support that you need. Now obviously, we, we can't do everything, so if there's something that we can't do, we'll make sure that we point you into a, to an organization that, that knows how to deal with those things. The world is so focused on young people right now, you know, and believe it or not, a lot of people want to help. But it's, it's really just a question of asking for that help. But without, without that, you get things like the Woolwich killing, or Boko Haram, or the conflict in Syria, or you know the jailbirds. You know all of these kind of atrocities in the world that that involve the age group that are really meant to be what's the word? That are really meant to be playing their part in making sure that tomorrow is a you know is tomorrow is a better tomorrow. You know making sure that they're tomorrow's leaders. So. But like I said, it's really all about asking the question. It's like Eleanor Roosevelt said. She said, learn from the mistakes of others. Because you, you can't live long enough to make them more yourself. So that's why we brought all of these wonderful people in today to talk to you guys, motivate you, tell you a bit about their career. If it's something you're looking to pursue, great. If, you're, if, you, if it's not, you might know someone who is not too sure as, they want to, as, they, as to what they want to do yet. And you just use their stories and you know maybe motivate them. So please feel, ask these guys questions because they're here to help. You know, wonderful people. So enjoy the rest of the show.